Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the series where I'm building Airbnb and in this video I'm going to do some improvements on the app. So actually I got a comment earlier today, so shout out to the commenter who added this, but he was saying some things that could have been improved on the app and I totally agree. So one thing was when somebody goes to book a booking, first you have to create an account, let me do that real quick. So when they go to actually book the stay, we create the model as soon as they click book your stay and it says your stay was booked and then it brings them to the payment form. So what will actually happen is now they have this your bookings reservation and it says that it's ready to check in even though they didn't pay. So if they just like left the page, it still says like that they have a booking. So I want to improve that and change it so that it says like it it has a status. So that's what the comment said. They suggested I add a status where it starts at pending. And then once it's like once it's paid for with Stripe, then the status would change to like paid for or like confirmed. And then you actually see the booking on this page and you could tell that it's you're going to book into you're going to check into it. So also what I would like to do is the house that you're booking we could replace this link that says like book now and then replace it with like you're you're gonna stay here and then like here's when you're gonna check in everything like that so we can change up the ui on this page and that'll be pretty exciting so let's get right into it the first thing we can do is add that field okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to add that new field onto the booking model to do that i'm gonna first create a migration by typing rose g migration and then i'll call it add status to bookings and status will be type integer that's what we're going to use for different states of our status and then what we can do is change the migration to set a default for this so to do that i'm going to go to the db and the migrate folder and i'll go to the latest migration and inside of here it's just adding a column to bookings which is a status and we can set the default to be zero that will be our default index for the status and then what we have to do is change the model so inside the app folder models and the booking the rb we're going to add an enum for status and then i'll use an array to set the different states we can have pending and then we can have complete so we default to zero which would be pending and then whenever we set it to complete it would use one that's a pretty easy way to add statuses into your Rails app. And then we could do is just do Rails DB migrate. And that should have set all of the bookings to have a status of pending. But I'm gonna double check that by going in the Rails console. And I'll just do booking.last. If we check the status, it is set to pending. So that's perfect. Everything is working correctly. And then whenever we do get payment, we just wanna update that to complete. So to handle that, I mean, the easiest way to do this is inside of Stripe or inside of the bookings controller on the success action, we could somehow like we could pass in our booking ID through the success URL down here on the return URL. Although the problem with that is if something goes wrong with the payment after we get redirected, which is kind of possible, then also they could hack this in the URL. Like they could find a way to get to this page. And if we just like update their booking and set it right on this page, it's not secure. It's definitely hackable. So we don't want to do that. Where we want to set the booking status to complete is inside of a listener for the webhook. So right now I haven't set up webhooks in this app yet. But we can easily do that if we go over to stripe.com. And actually, oh, for locally, you use Stripe Listen. So you use the CLI to listen for webhooks. But let me pull up the documentation. Stripe webhook docs. Okay, there we go. There's a whole page for setting up webhooks. 
and we can get this simple code right here for our webhook endpoint. And what we're actually gonna do is create that endpoint in our app. So we can go to the config routes.rb and then we're gonna need to, to create that route. So, oh, actually we already have a Stripe webhook events route, right? So we're already sending webhooks into our app. I forgot because we're using, yeah, we're already using webhooks just in a earlier episode. So we already have this whole, all set up. This makes it a lot easier. So what I have to do is down here where we're listening for the event type, we just need to listen for another event, which would be like payment intent succeeded right here. Or maybe it'll be Stripe checkout complete. So let's look for the different events. Let's look events checkout. Stripe. Or maybe I should have searched that on that website. And search for like checkout. Here we go. Checkout session completed. Maybe we should listen for that. And checkout session completed. We could do this webhook event creation thing. And then account updated job perform later. So what we'd actually do is we'd have our own background job for this. Like bookings complete job perform later pass in the webhook event ID and then we can look this up inside of that background job so from the console I'm going to generate the job so rails g job and I'll put the name of it booking how about instead of the s let's just do booking complete job booking complete and then you don't need the job part because it'll automatically put that we can restart the server get that set up and I'm going to go over to the jobs folder inside of app and go in the booking complete job and I'm actually going to just copy this code from account updated job because it already is doing a lot of the stuff to set up stripe and right in here we're looking at the stripe object data so we're going to need to kind of like figure out how to pass the booking ID into this payment or this checkout success event, which I've done before to look up a model. But we're gonna have to go back to the listings bookings controller inside of Stripe session. And we're gonna need to pass in some metadata on this. So let me look up how to do that. So it's kind of hard to find the information I need about uh, this. So actually I'm just gonna take the name of the class and search that up. Stripe checkout session. And then it looks like that brings me right over to the API docs. So this is a bit better. So we can see like the session object. Ooh, there's a metadata. So set of key of key value pairs that you can attach to an object. So this is what we're looking for. It's just a hash of anything that we want. So that would be a key method on this main level object. So we can put this anywhere in here. Let's just put it right after payment intent data. Do metadata. Let's add the booking ID. Booking.id. And this is perfect. Then we should be able to look it up and just make sure to add semicolon after this hash. Okay, and then inside of booking complete job, uh, probably stripe object dot metadata. Booking ID is what I would expect, and then we would do booking equals booking dot find for this booking ID, and then we're gonna update the booking the status to be complete, just like this. I think you can also do this booking.complete with an exclamation point mark. I think that's a built-in method. Let's try it out. So what we are gonna have to do is listen for webhooks using the CLI. So I'm gonna go in a new tab and just do Stripe listen. Actually, first let's do Stripe login to make sure we're logged into the right account, which I think I have another one open. So I'm gonna quickly switch the account that I'm logged into. So yeah, I'm on this other account right now. 
Let me go over to the Airbnb account. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Stripe login. It says go to this URL. I went here and I'm going to allow access. There we go. So now I know it's the right account. I'm going to do Stripe listen dash dash forward dash two localhost 3000 webhook events. I think that's just how we called it. No, it's Stripe webhook events, right? This. Let's check the routes to RB. Yeah, namespace Stripe webhook events. Probably add that. Webhook events. I'm gonna press enter. So now we're listening for webhook events. And then all I have to do is go and test this out. So if I want to have the console open, let me try to do this side by side. But I should be able to just do a listing from mobile view. Go book my stay. I do Saturday. Book your stay. Says I'm so close. There's the fill out the information. No, don't save this. <laughs> Come on. This form, why I want I wish this form was a little bit more slimmed down. But I guess we should probably capture that information. It looks like there's an error in the back end. Undefined method metadata for stripe event so it looks like we did get the webhook event and we did go all the way to the background job that's pretty cool but just this wasn't a method so what i'm going to do is why don't we just try this code out in the console and see if like what method is correct and then we can fix our code so i'm going to go to rel c and then i'm going to use this code but i'm going to set event id well actually i have to make sure i'm finding the right event so let's look at the last webhook event and see what type of event it is. Last dot data dot I'm trying to find the type. Yeah, this is hard. How about dot keys? Okay, so there's only object. Dot keys. There's like so much payment. I want to see what the event type is. It's kind of weird. Maybe object again. It says checkout session. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, I'm just trying to find the right. So let's just say that that is the right event. So we'll say webhook event equals webhook event dot last. Well, also. I don't see any sort of metadata. Let's see. So I tried to attach this. It says, I don't know about the event ID. Oh, I thought I said event ID. No, I didn't. It's webhook event. So I need to say event ID equals webhook event dot ID. Now we got the ID. I'm going to try to run this code. And then we have stripe object type checkout session completed. So it is the right event. Now let's try to see if we can get metadata. It doesn't have it. How about dot data? Dot metadata? No. We can even do dot methods to see all the methods, but that kind of gives us like too many methods. Right, how about dot object?
Dot metadata. It does have it. Dot booking ID. Look at this. So I finally found it. So all we have to do is replace this code right here. Booking ID. There we go. Now I'm going to set booking ID to this. So it's off the stripe object data dot object dot metadata. All right, that's pretty simple. Now I'm going to exit out. So the next time we do this, it should work. So let me just go like backwards. Uh, here we go. We're actually, see we're on the right booking for 10. So now I can actually complete the payment real quick. There we go. So for email, we actually, we already have an email. So I, I don't get why it's asking for me for it again. We should probably try to figure that out. Let's go back to the Stripe session docs. And let's see if I can change this a little bit. So there's mode, payment, setup, or subscription. That's kind of cool. Save payment details to charge your customers later. Oh, I like that. I could try that. Oh, look, customer email. If provided, this value will be used when the customer object is created. If not, customers will be asked to enter their email address. Oh, or we could create a customer ID, the ID of the customer for the session. This is a way better idea because here, let me show you. If we go to the Stripe website, I'm pretty sure every time we go to this form, it creates a new customer, which might not be good because you want to like, you. it's just, it's kind of like creating too many. So it looks like I'm not in test mode. Let me switch over to test mode. Overview. Actually, you can't tell. It looks like this is the one guy that I just created. We've charged him, look, like three different times. So that's cool. But... As soon as I put a different name, I think it would create like a new customer. Let's try this out. Hello, YouTube. There we go. I'm going to book my stay. Your booking has been confirmed. Awesome. In the back end, we get a bunch of events. I don't know if my booking is actually confirmed though. So now I have to go to like the bookings page and we have two bookings. Uh, we need to now filter it so that it doesn't, it only shows the, like the ones with the correct status. So if we go back to the booking model, we have the pending and complete status. So I need a filter on this bookings page to only show the completed ones. I think with enum, it should already give us a helpful method for that. Let's go in the Rails console and I'm going to grab like the listing.last.bookings. So see, it has three bookings. Then if I do dot complete, you'll see that uh, it's empty, right? Because it's not, it's only showing the bookings that are completed. So we even just say booking.all.complete. It only gives us the complete ones versus if we do pending, it gives us all of the pending ones. So we can take advantage of this when we're displaying those records on the page. So the first place that we're doing that is inside of the layouts nav bar. I'm pretty sure we had some logic or if we have bookings. So that's actually fine. But once you're on the bookings path, I want to like differentiate like these. This one's actually confirmed versus this one you still have to pay for something like that. So I'm going to go over to the bookings folder, the index and on here, let's just loop over bookings dot complete dot each booking. And then now it'll only show the completed ones. So this is perfect. We show this booking. And then for now, I think we could just wrap this whole card inside of a link that goes to the booking. We could do like a link to Booking do it reloads undefined method booking path. Oh, link to booking. Weird. What was the path then? I'm not booking. <laughs> link to booking dot listing. I'm trying to link to the listing. Let me reload. 
There we go. So it does work. And now I want to change this text down here. So if you have a confirmed booking, then I want to basically just show some different text on that booking. So to do that, I keep calling it a booking, but it's a listing. So inside of app views, listings folder on the show page, I'm going to come in here and all right, I'll find this code right here. If the listing day price, then I set up the link to create, to create a new booking or a new listing booking. So what I'll do is I'll check in here. If current user dot bookings where uh, first of all status is complete and then the listing ID is the listing ID also I'm thinking that we only want to change the UI if the booking is upcoming which means like the date is in the future and it's not in the past so we need to say if like checkout date is time dot now dot dot, which means if it's if the checkout date is farther or is like is later than today than right now, and then we could just do a dot any else. So if there's not, then we're just gonna show the regular booking text. So if there is dot any. Well, maybe we maybe this will just be a method on the user model like if current user dot upcoming bookings dot any and then we could display like or wait actually not upcoming booking because we're trying to do it for the specific listing so we could do that too upcoming bookings and then we just pass in the listing then we make that model on the user.rb. We could have a model, we could have a method called upcoming bookings. And then we're gonna pass in a listing. Maybe listing could be nil. And then inside of here, we're gonna check for this bookings. And then listing ID. We're actually gonna wanna create this query real quick. So the query would be like a hash object. And then we only wanna set this key if we have a listing passed in. You can set this and then we'll just do a query. Uh, what listing ID equals listing.ad if listing, just like that. There we go. And then upcoming bookings. We probably want to memoize this. We can say bookings or equal or equal. We can return bookings at bookings at the top. I think that might work for memoization. Maybe you're supposed to put this all into a method. But then we're going to have like so many methods, but we could do like find upcoming bookings. We put a private method. Upcoming bookings for the listing. And just put all of the logic inside of here. So it's memoized, so I think that'll save some queries. So like when we do it here, we can call dot any and then we can also just use it in here. And it won't cost any more. Like it shouldn't do another query, it should just cache it. So the upcoming bookings listings first. Dot title. Upcoming bookings dot listing. And no, not the title dot Second date, I might have some text, but like, we have an upcoming reservation. All right, let's finally reload and see what happens.
Undefined method check and date for active record relation. Oh, right. So I need to call dot first on this to get the first one. Reload. And look, it actually worked. First try. You have an upcoming reservation. So I want to reformat this. It's a little bit prettier, like we've done in other places. So I think to do that, we can go over to even the booking success. Yeah, right here we have it. And we can just put this dot check in date with the surf time reload. Okay, this looks nice. And then I can go ahead and style this and make it look a little bit prettier. Flex justify center. And now, obviously for Airbnb, they give you more information than just like this. You'd have a whole reservation page. So I'll probably build that. But first I'm just handling a few of these edge cases. And this video is mostly focused on adding those changes for the comment that I received. So the suggestions that I got earlier today, where we have this text, you have an upcoming reservation and we might wanna make that stick out a little bit more. So it's like bright and happy. We could try changing the text color to do like a cool gradient for the, you have an upcoming, so let's do a span. Let's do BG clip text. And I'm gonna try to set the background of the, or like the color of the text to be a gradient. We can do text transparent and do a gradient. Easy gradient to bottom from red 500 to pink 500. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Reload. You can't even see really like much on the text itself, but it actually is working. So let's change from red to like purple. A little bit more obvious. Reload. Okay, I mean, that's cool. You still can barely see it. And then the check in, I'm going to make this look like. A little like badge. We'll wrap this in a spam. I can do some margin on this too. And let's do a BG gradient to right red 500 to pink 600. X red 50. Let's do P2 rounded large, or actually rounded full. So we have a full circle. Alright, that looks cool. And then we can do item center on this outside div. Cool. Yeah, that looks cool. Although the check-in looks kind of like a button. So let's change this. Instead of being like an action text, we'll say like check-in at so that they can see like we're just doing some cool design. Oh, then maybe I'll make this text lighter. Or actually, maybe it's too light. That's why I can't see it. Anyways, let's make all this text bigger by doing like text large. That's what we did for the other one. Okay, you have an upcoming reservation. Maybe I'll make the button text a little bit smaller. Text medium. Text small. Reload. All right, I mean, that's cool. Obviously, we could change this. You guys could change this to whatever you want it to look like. I don't really want to spend that much more time on this. But I like colors, so I'm just going to make it a little bit colorful. I know Airbnb likes colors, too. Oh, they probably keep it a little bit more to the color scheme of the app. Like, that's a little bit too bright. Mm, all right, let's get rid of the brightness on the... You have an upcoming reservation. Just trying to think this out. Maybe we'll go like flex call so that they're stacked on top of each other. We can just add a flex call and leave the rest of the styling. See how that looks. All right, you know what? That looks a little bit better. I like that. Let's just leave it. 
you have an upcoming reservation, check in at this date. Maybe check in on, probably a good word to use. Yeah, check in on the 86, which is 86. So that's like two months from now. Wow. And over here at the bookings, we have this. Yeah, everything looks great. Cool. And now let's make sure that everything works if we go like incognito. <laughs> no, we don't we get an error because there's not a current user in that situation. So let's go back to the listing show page. And right here on this if condition, we just need to add probably like the safety operator on here. Reload. There we go. So a guest user, someone who's not signed in, could still look at the listing. But then when they try to book, it says like you need to sign in and that's fine. All right, this is looking pretty awesome. So in this video already, I've covered adding that status so that we can make sure that the bookings are completed. Now from here, let's make it so that somebody else can't reserve the same house at the same time. So that's kind of a tricky one, but we can handle this. So maybe first of all, let's display both of the dates on the bookings card. So to do that, let's go to the bookings folder inside the views. So inside the app folder, inside views, bookings, index, that's where we had our card. Let me just copy this and do check out just so we can see this and then change it to check out date. That's perfect. So now I have two windows open, one incognito where I'm going to create a new account. And as we can see, Actually, this looks weird. Why is there 15 on the first one? No, that can't be right. So I think the surf time. Why do wait? Why did I put the date first? That's not really something we usually do in America. So I need to change this up. I have to move it like this. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm so confused. Yeah, I don't know why I did it like that. But we want month, date, and then year. That was kind of confused. Like, wait, why is the 15th first? So actually, the check in date would be today. Check in on that's today. So maybe we should do something else if it's like check in on this. But maybe we should change the text if they're going to check in today. But I'm not going to worry about that, but the checkout date is the 15th, so that's all that we are caring about. So now, I have this house reserved from today until the 15th. I don't want anybody else to be able to book the house too. So if some guy comes over to the entire cabin, right now they can click on book. Well, they're going to have to create an account first. I'm going to call my guy like Lake Lover. Okay, so book your stay. Now here's the problem. So if I go to like try to book a stay from today until, that's the same exact booking date as this one, right? This should fail. Or how about from today, how about if I'm only staying from Saturday to like Tuesday? It's still gonna override on this booking. So I need to fix this. Cause right now it would allow me, look. Book your stay. It says your stay was booked for this date. So now we both have stays for this booking and that's really bad. So I'm gonna fix this. <clears throat> First thing I'll do is let me go in the console and delete that last booking. Yeah, we don't want that one because there's already someone staying. Let's just start working on the logic. So the first thing I'll do is do the backend validations, which means when we try to create the model, we can just straight up block it in the backend which is really good for security. And then we can go on to actually limiting the state picker UI so that like these days would be grayed out and you couldn't select them because that was suggested in the comment that I received. But first of all, I'm gonna handle the back end so that we just can't, we, it won't allow us to book the stay if there's already someone staying. So what we can do is inside of the booking model, we can add a new validation. 
they like validates. Well, it's kind of tricky because like validates all this stuff. Like if someone else is booking, so we might want to add a custom validator so we can do validate. I think that's how you do it. Or is it validates? I don't know. I think it's just validate. Um, booking is available or how about no validate listing is available for dates or just listing is available and we could go and have this in a private method listing is available and what we're going to do is return i can't remember what we do let me go and look this up i think we have to add two errors like some sort of errors module i'm gonna look up custom validation rails So yeah, we can do just the standard validates a certain attribute and then check for like presence, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a custom validator. There's all of this validates associated books. Validates each uses a block. It's kind of cool. Validates with, so you can use validates with to, to pass in a custom class. Hmm. So this is pretty cool. And there's like so much you can pass in custom messages for validations. There's a lot you can do. Numericality. <laughs> I still need to get to the custom validate. I think it's just called validate. Yeah, like this. Custom methods. Perfect. So you put in your method and then inside of the method you add to errors and if you don't add to the errors then there won't be any errors okay that's easy to, to see so we're actually going to add it to it's a good question uh, listing available is that would that work listing is already booked that's our error but we're going to have to first do the logic to see if that's true. So we can do booking dot where uh, check in date is. We kind of want to like find in between this range. So if there's already a book in, well, first of all, the status should be complete. And then the check in date is our check-in date the check-in date is greater than our check-in date and checkout date is less than checkout date. actually it's going to be kind of complex also it's not checking like that the best way to do this might actually be to do this from the console Yeah, we're going to want to do this from the console real quick. Listing is available and just see if we can get this logic to work. So I'm going to open up a new window or maybe I'll just turn off the server for a second. Go into rail C. And let's try to query for that booking. Booking.count. We do booking.complete. We actually can do that. And then we can just check where check in date and dot zone dot now. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. Because check in date, how about let's say our check in date is gonna be and dot zone dot now. And then check out date is gonna be check in date plus three dot days. 
So something like that. We have these two dates that I can use now. And now I'm going to find bookings where... Um, that's another thing for the listing ID. So booking belongs to listing. We pass in listing ID. Let me quickly get that. Which I can actually get the listing ID from the booking.complete.first.listing. ID. There we go. And now we're going to look for the listing ID. Listing ID. So now we found another booking where the listing ID is the same and it's complete. So we know like there's somebody else who booked a booking for this house, but we don't know if it's going to conflict with the dates. So that's like the question right now is, are my check-in date that I have right here, is that going to conflict with the, with this other booking? So I think what we can do is probably do a check-in date to do the query that checks if the check-in date, if our check-in date is greater than their check-in date, and the checkout date is, <laughs> it's getting so confusing. So our check-in date is in between their check-in and their checkout. I think that's what I was saying. So if it's greater than the check-in, and if it's less than yeah yeah like that if it's less than check-in date so i'm using dot dot because that kind of is like a shorthand for this for less and then for the check-in we actually want if it's greater than the check-in date or if it's less than the checkout date it's so confusing let's run it it actually it gives us no <laughs> That's funny. Uh, no. Hmm. How about we just only do if the check-in date is greater than that check-in date? Okay, so that automatically is no. Maybe I'll set this dot first dot check-in date. Is it equal to my check-in date? No. We are side by side. It looks like my check-in date is later than theirs. Obviously, because it's... So we need to also check, is it like equal to or greater than? Uh, which is kind of... How do we do that? Let's go back to the query. Maybe we have to say like... Yeah, I don't even, we might have to do some custom SQL for this. I think we're gonna have to do custom SQL. So where check-in date greater or equal to, and we do question mark. So this is to prevent SQL injection. Oh shoot. I know we have to do semicolon quotes. If the check-in date is greater or equal to, and then we're gonna just paste in Checking date, which I feel like don't we have to format that? I don't know. But look, if we do less than, it actually works. If check in date is less than this, okay, and checkout date uh, greater than question mark. And then it needs two. I don't, also don't think we need the quotes and all that stuff. Interpolation, because I'm not adding anything else. I'm just going to do checkout date. Boom. We have this path. So if check-in date, if there's a booking with a check-in date that's less than my check-in date, and the checkout date is after my check-in date, it means my check-in would be right in between their stay. <laughs> So that's not going to work. I think that's all we have to check for actually is this. And there is already one. So I'm going to take this query. 
this big old long query. Exit out of here. And let's put that in the validator. There. There we go. It's kind of big and chunky, but we can check if there is a booking where my check in date would be. Oh, wait, I use checkout date. Or if their checkout date is greater than my checkout date. I think I mostly just want to check for the check-in date because, like, if my check-in's between their check-in and checkout, it means it's conflicting. So we don't even care about the checkout. But if this dot any, then we're gonna throw that error. Say it, listing's already booked. Actually, we might just be able to put it on the listing. Errors add listing. Listing's already booked. Okay. Cool. So now let's go test this out. So actually inside of our incognito window, that's where I was going to do it. Let's try to make a booking. Check out. Book my stay. Wait, it, <laughs> it looks like it worked. Or no. Let's check the console. Or I'll see booking.last. I can't tell. I need to time to go in words. Maybe you do. Time helper. Ah, oh, how do I use time in words right here? <laughs> it says like twenty one. No, I can't even tell. Looking that last dot listing. Hmm. No, yeah, it looks like we just created a booking for this listing. And it redirected me to the payments page. So this didn't work. How about if we go check in date is the 9th? And for sure, this logic should pass, I think. So I ran it. Can't tell what happened. Oh, it didn't move, so I guess that's a good thing. Now we're not displaying the error, so I want to quickly add the error. So on the views, we're going to go to the listings, bookings, new. That's where we have these fields. And then we can check for that error. So actually, we can just do this up at the top. We can say f.errors. Each do error. We simply do like a span. Do text red. Let's pop the error. See if that works. Reload. Undefined method errors. So maybe we have to do f dot object, which would be just the same as doing the booking dot errors. All right. So nothing. Let me put my check in date there. My check out date. Book my stay. Hmm. Still nothing. No errors are showing up. Okay, let's just try to display the errors on the page. Like, let's just display at booking dot error. I think that should display it. Let's give it a go. I'm not seeing anything. Even though it is re-rendering the page. You can see it right there. But we're not seeing any change. Inside the model, the booking.rb, we have this condition where we're going to be adding the errors. We do have the validator. How about we do check-in date? Yeah, that's kind of fair. Like listing is already booked for the check-in. That's fair. Book my stay. Still nothing. We are getting a rollback. I'm just not sure why we're not seeing the errors. So let's go and check out the controllers real quick. That's kind of weird. So let's go to the listings bookings controller. So if we don't get, if the booking doesn't save, then we're going to render new, which is perfect. So then we have this bookings model, but we should just save the booking. So we'll save this variable. We'd already have it. Like we'd have the user and everything. That's a good way to check. Actually, let's try to display the user dot email. Let's use the safety operator. So we can test if even like if we're getting a page update. 
Okay, I didn't see anything. All right, let's just try to reload. Nine. Okay, there we go. Mm. Roll back. So yeah, it's not going through. See, it's even saying in listing is available. It's doing a rollback. But for some reason, I can't see the error on the page. Oh, this is frustrating. F dot object. Trying to display that. See, it's a booking. And if I call dot errors on it. All messages. I think that's the method you can use. Reload, it's just an empty bracket. Try to do my booking. Still empty bracket, although it should have an error message inside of there. That's weird. On the booking model, this looks fine. We're doing like the errors add, but it's not showing up. I'm gonna have to look that up. Custom validation will not showing up on page. Error not showing up. Make sure you display the errors. Oh wow, thanks. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. And I have the same like render new. Oh, maybe we should try errors based. That's what they're using. Looks like they're just shoveling it in like this. All right, let's try. Oh, we should also check, make sure that the checkout date isn't before the check-in date, because that's kind of weird. Look your stay. Look, it actually said my stay was booked now. That's weird. Something went wrong. I don't even know what happened. But let's let's add a validation to make sure that the checkout has to be after the check-in. So to do that, it has to actually be more than one day after the check-in. So to do that, let's go back to the booking model, which we already are right here. What are we gonna do? Just wondering, should I use one of their built-in validators for this, or should I do my own? We could try inclusion. But the problem is, I don't know if we can actually access like the checkout date from that. So we might just want to do our own validator. So if uh, checkout dates valid, let's make the method for that. You know, basically just check check-in date how would we do this check-in date um, well first of all we can just do check-out date greater than check-in date which I guess yeah that's that, that'll probably work so if checkout date less than or equal to check-in date then we're going to add some errors. Errors.add. Check out date. Must be uh, more than one day after check in. Okay, that looks good. So let's test that out, see if that validator works. We just do like 10, and then we're going to try to check out on the 9th. So it'd be like negative. I should throw an error. So I did it. It looks like it did a rollback, but we're still not seeing the errors on the view. That's so weird. If we look in console, oh, we're actually seeing an error. Form responses must redirect to another location. Really? Wait, that's weird. 
but we're just doing rendered new. So why would that cause an error? It's actually really weird. I'm going to screenshot that and put that up on GitHub or see if somebody else is having this error. So it's not showing the errors and then it's having this turbo error in the console. Here, let's go to GitHub. Oh, make sure that we're in my normal browser. Check my notifications. How to use on VM. Ooh, I got a response to my question on about Thruster. Cool. I'll check that out in a second. But first, we're going over to the Turbo framework library thing. Hot wire turbo. We're gonna look through the issues. And I wanna see if anybody else is having the same issue. Form responses must redirect to another location. Which I know they are, but like I'm getting it in a weird place. So look right here, this error. So I'm not seeing really anything that relates to me. How about form errors? I don't know why I'm seeing this. I'm just gonna create an issue anyways. Like form not showing, not displaying errors on page. Simple Rails form where I'm selecting dates for a reservation and I submit do some validations on the model and then in the controller if the model not saved then a render new do code snippet uh, I'm expecting the errors to show up on the form. But instead, I receive an empty array and see this error in the console. And I'm going to upload the picture that I just saved on my desktop, the screenshot. This is pretty confusing to me. I'm going to create this issue. Form response must redirect to another location. And maybe I'll show like the code, in the controller, just the simple controller code. All right, let's go back. This is the code. My controller. Or wait, I think we want. Isn't there an option for multi line code? Maybe it's just like this. No, wait, look, that, that looks weird. Maybe three dashes, I think. There we go. So I put up a new error, or a new issue on GitHub. This is so weird. So I mean, what the heck? I'm just trying to display the error on the page. I don't get it. Here stay. Wait, that actually went through. Although it shouldn't because I'm pretty sure somebody else already has that booking for that date. Look, from the 8th to the 15th. I just booked it for the 12th to the 14th. Yeah, that's... The code's definitely not working in the validation. So let's go back to the query. Like, forget about not displaying the error. Now the validation just isn't working at all. So let's try to do one where the checkout date is before. So I'll do the 12th and I'll try to check out on the 11th. Book your stay. So now I just get like the nothing happens and probably in the console we see that error. It's very weird. Look, console. Form responses must redirect to another location. That's weird. Uh, let's go to the bookings controller and inside of render new. Is there anything else I should be doing? 
like status the other. I know I've had to do that in the past to make turbo work. See other actually worked. But I've never had to do this before. Yo. No, that's weird. It must be a change to the to turbo or something. We gotta fix that. Oh look, someone started my repository. That's cool. Uh, let's go back to that issue I created. Form not displaying errors. I was able to resolve this by adding that is the other on the render new. But this is weird because never I have never had to do this before. At least uh, at least I'm pretty sure. I don't remember doing C other for the for render new. Maybe that's just something you have to do. Okay. Well, now we now we show the error. So perfect. Let's go back to the index or no, let's go back to the form. So the listings bookings new page and let's go and loop over these. Each error. And you can just put the span. We're going to display the error. Just like that. Reload. Oh, looks like there's a syntax problem. Oh, I forgot to do the do on the block. That's really important. All right, so now let's try that again. If we go and try to have the checkout before, we get this error message. How about on the same day, we still get the error message. I kind of want to clean that up, actually, make it look a little bit nicer. Maybe we'll do like a max width mall. And also we're using font awesome so we could pull in like a font awesome icon for like error or like issue wait <laughs> alerts yeah maybe exclamation we could do just the exclamation mark i guess we don't really need an icon for but it's fine reload do that again. I guess we didn't need to reload. So now we do have this little icon. But I still want to style it. I thought I did a max with small, but I guess that's not small enough. Try extra small. And we don't need to reload because we could just redo the form. Although, yes, yeah, still. Maybe I'll do a BG red 300. And then like a border. B2, border B2, or maybe I can do border Y too. I think to do top and bottom. Now we're gonna have like a real red border on this alert. But for some reason, resubmitting the form, I think it's because I changed the styling. Okay, so that looks interesting. Still, like, it looks like the sizing is off. Yeah, like that error is totally on a different styling than the form, so I wanna fix that. Oh, let's put it inside the div. Maybe that's the issue. Put it right inside of here. Now any errors will just pop up in that really red thing. Maybe we should change the text to be like red 700. I don't even know. Do this again. Ooh, so that looks cool though. Well, let's get rid of the max width on this error. That it goes to full width. Hey, there we go. Then maybe do a little padding vertically, like PX to. Alright, cool. <coughs> yeah, that looks good to me. I'm displaying the error. Yeah, so let me fix my date now. Go to the 14th. Book my stay. Well, now it's booked. But the problem is that, look, somebody already booked this for that date. 
check into the 8th to the 15th. So that shouldn't have even been a possibility. I should have seen an error. We're going to have to fix the other validation. But at least now that we can see, we can see that the validation wasn't working correctly. And we can go and fix it accordingly. So with the listing is available, it looks like this isn't working. So we're doing like the query for the listing ID is listing ID. And then where check-in date is less than. How about less than equal and checkout date is greater than equal. Although you should be able to book a check-in on the same date as a checkout, I think. That should be fine. As long as the Airbnb, like... As long as the owner is fine with that amount of time to like clean the house between rentals, I'm not sure how they really do that, but I know that Airbnb does let you check in the same day as somebody else is checking out, just like hotels do that too. So where check-in date is less than or equal to, oh, that's not right. Where check-in date, wait, no, actually that is right. So where their check-in date is greater than or equal to our check-in date and checkout date is greater than checkout date dot any. <laughs> so this is the question, which it's not working. So let's change the errors too. Now we can actually do it like this way. We add it on checkout date. But it looks fine. And if I put my check in on like any day after the 8th, the 9th to the 12th, book my stay, it says, oh, check in date is so, yeah, we get kind of like this weird message. So let me change it to error space. But this is good. Because now we're finally getting, looks like the logic is correct now. Book your stay. Oh, not not equal. I meant to do a shovel onto errors base. All right, so let's go to the ninth to the twelfth. Wait, but now it now it went through. What the heck? So maybe errors. Maybe the problem is actually that we're doing it on errors base, and that's like not registering or something. So let's do errors. Check out date. Or check in date. Shovel on this. Nine to the ten. Ah, oh, it was booked. It's not working. But what if we do errors add? The question is, is it doing different things? Or is it just the dates that I'm choosing? To the 10th to the 11th. No, now we get the error. Check out date. Listing is already booked. So the problem for me is that they're putting like the name check out date. How about we just say check in date? And then for the message, we'll say like is already booked for this listing. And then we could actually tell them like what date they can use please select well yeah that's the question uh, how do we show them all of the dates that are already reserved we probably want to just do that right in the select field so that they see like oh these dates are already booked so i can't do it there let's book my stay check-in date is already booked for this listing but i can't tell like which dates are available so we're gonna have to work on some logic for that but for right now we already know that this guy's booking on the 15th. So oh, let's just do that in the form real quick. Let's go to the 15th to the 18th. And this should work, no problem. Hey, it worked. So my stay was booked. Look, we're actually still, the surf time is kind of weird. And I don't know why I set it up like that last time where I had the day in front of the month, but that looks kind of weird to me. So I'm gonna need to go around and fix that in all the places I was doing that. I think I did that on the bookings controller. Yeah, right here. I'm gonna do a, just a, a search for the surf time code. Control F, it looks like I'm doing it in a few places. And I'm just gonna do a find and replace. 
forget how to do that. Can also just do it in the place for them, like so. We just have to move the date. Whoops, <laughs> move the date after the months because it just looks more correct to me. There we go. And realistically, we should make a you can make like a little helper method for this so that you don't have to remember the surf time thing every time. That'd be a lot better. All right, so cool. Now we can do, we have a little bit of validations on the bookings. We also don't show the bookings unless you have one that is confirmed. Now we should probably show like the bookings that need to be paid for because I've already created a booking, but I need to show that it needs to be paid for. We could show that on the bookings index. We can probably just do like another loop for the pending ones we could do another title your pending bookings your upcoming bookings and then maybe we will only show this top header if you have any completed bookings complete dot any Probably the same for this. Pending dot any. And then maybe if current user dot bookings dot count equals count dot zero. You can just do another each one that says like This is where your bookings will show up. Although you wouldn't really see this bookings page unless you already have one. Looks like there's a syntax error already. Wow, what did I do? Oh, I forgot the end on this top. If statement, I, th I think I did. Reload. Yep. There we go. Although now the styling is all messed up. I think I forgot a div somewhere in here. Yeah, look, we have two divs at the bottom, so I definitely cut one of these divs off. Uh, try to figure out which one it was. Maybe just delete it. Maybe it's not important. <laughs> Probably was. Let's go back here. Reload. Yeah, look, <laughs> something's definitely missing a div. We just have to figure out where it is. Down here, looks fine. Oh, this is weird. So try to figure it out better. I can just like cut out a section of code to see if that fixes anything. I can't really tell. Well, actually we wouldn't even show this code unless we have the, those bookings. So it's definitely something in here in the pending bookings. And I think all it is is this div right here. We had an extra div because we're supposed to have this div which adds some styling let's add that back reload there we go wow your pending bookings i have a lot of them uh, and then the link to instead of just going to the booking listing we should bring them to like the payment path and instead of showing check in it says like you need to pay now pay now to complete Confirm and booking. Reload. Pay now to confirm your booking. That should probably be in like big letters. Do like a pink. Pay now to confirm your booking. And then when you just click anywhere on here, I want to take them to the payment page. 
So I want to have like a little hover effect on the card. I wonder what we can do for that. Maybe like a... We could do a simple brightness thing. I guess we could do a hover brightness 75. So that just makes the whole element a little bit darker, which see that gives us that hover kind of effect. Which I like that. And then the link to is going to have to go to the payment page. So to do that, let's go to the bookings controller and let's find this payment listing bookings path just like that. And go back, plop it in, and then just put in the correct booking. We have the listing. So everything should be good. Or actually, we don't have the listing. We have to use the booking.listing. Just like that. Reload. Now when you click on your pending booking, it actually brings you to the payment page. So I can put the payment in. Although those bookings are invalid anyways. Like you'll see, uh, they're actually invalid. So we might want to do a check for that real quick. On the payment page, if the booking's invalid, we might just want to like take care of that. So to do that, we can go to the listings, bookings controller, or no, the payment page right here. We could say if not booking not valid, then we have to like redirect to listing the alert the booking is not valid see what that looks like so if you reload look we get refresh and it says like your booking is not valid okay that's fair try and book a new one maybe on the bookings page in general we shouldn't show any invalid bookings so we might want to do that on the bookings index so if current user bookings are pending dot any we probably want to do like a little query for invalid or for only valid which i don't even know how you do that query for only valid records Fastest way of getting all invalid records. Hmm. It's kind of funny. I don't even know. Well, actually, no. The funniest thing about this is that this only counts for like old records because now that we've added in those validations, you would never see invalid records because they just wouldn't save to the database. So really what we need to do is we need to delete those records manually in the console real quick. So we can just do like a booking.all.filter, pass in a block, v.valid, not v.valid. And now we get all of these records that are invalid. And then we'll just say like each and destroy. There we go. And now if we do that again, we don't see any invalid bookings. That takes care of that. We can reload. Now we don't have to have that code on the bookings controller either, like doing this redirect, because that would never happen. But that's how the Rails validators work, by the way. It won't save the model until it passes these validations. So that's kind of important to realize. So now we can see we only have one pending booking that is valid that we have to pay for. So if I go in here, I can't even see the check-in date, but let's just go ahead and fill out the form. Go ahead and buy this booking. It says check-in on the 15th. Okay, perfect. So uh, this one is valid because I would check in right after this guy checks out. He has to check out on the 15th, and I get to check in. This is awesome. We'll go to your bookings. Wait, actually, it looks like maybe that query I did deleted my booking. I don't know. What happened there? Because now it only shows my pending bookings. Maybe the code, maybe the code is wrong inside of the bookings index. 
if current user bookings complete any. Because I should have had a booking. That's weird. Let's go and check the console real quick. Where I'll see booking.complete. We only have one of them. We should have had two. Dot listing. Okay, that's pretty weird. I guess I might have deleted it accidentally. Uh, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and do a booking. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go for my same dates of the 8th to the 15th. Book my stay. So my stay was booked. Weird. So I'm on the payment page. It looks like... There's some sort of error with the payment thing. You cannot have multiple embedded checkout objects. Wait, I don't. Do I? Let me reload. Okay, that was weird. Now we have this form. And I'm using 4.2 because that's the part that works on Stripe. I'm just doing like random silly information. I always do that. I can't resist. There, we went through the process. We have our check-in. We have our booking. If I go to my bookings, okay, here are my upcoming bookings and then also my pending bookings. I still need to book, I still need to pay for my Barbie dream house one. <laughs> okay, but here, this is what I was trying to do earlier is, so, on the like the form also we're getting this error now you cannot have multiple embedded checkout objects i don't know if it's like caching it on the page or something i think it is with the stimulus whenever we go back it's like caching it yeah it totally is which means on our stimulus controller i think we need to do some teardown which means hook into the disconnect event so let's go into the, our code let's go to the app javascript controllers and the Stripe payment controller. So inside of here on connect, we do this whole checkout mount and like we set everything up, but I think we need to take care of whenever we disconnect, we're gonna wanna like tear it down. I wonder if there's any information on this. Stripe checkout embedded. Let's see if there's a method to like tear down. Check out JS mount. Hmm. About remove. Right, check out JS. Destroy embedded checkout. Here we go. Checkout.destroy. Removes checkout from the DOM and destroys it. Once destroyed, an embedded checkout can be reattached. Yeah, I think that's what we have to do. So, checkout.destroy, <laughs> apparently, we have to probably use this.checkout, so which, instead of using const, do this.checkout, and then we can destroy the checkout. That's kind of like an interesting little thing that I just noticed. Let's reload, make sure everything works, let's navigate away, and then let's go back, and boom, we're not seeing the error anymore, so that fixed it. I guess you just need to handle the teardown of the element. All right, now I want to get to the point that I was saying before, which is like the customer information. If we already have this, I don't think we should keep asking for it. So that's why inside of the session object, we're going to pass them the ID of the customer, or we could just pass customer email. It might be easier to just do customer email right now. We could do that inside of bookings controller right in here. We just pass in that as an attribute. So maybe after metadata, customer email, to so current user email. And if we go back, we'll reload the form. It pre-fills our email. Okay, that's already a little bit easier. I like that. And there's other things we can do too, like setting the cardholder name. I think we could do that too. But 
We don't really force the user to have their name set out, but they can in settings. If you go over to settings, they can put a first name, last name, but right now we're not like making them do that. Anyway, this is a little bit easier. I'm gonna pay for my listing, pay for my booking real quick. There we go. Boom, $1,400. Now I have my Barbie dream house. <laughs> Such a silly one. All right, and look, if I click on here, it says I have an upcoming reservation. Check it on the 8th. And I also have one for the cabin, also on the 8th. So I guess I just want to have multiple Airbnbs for one night. Have a whole party. Hey, if I want to, I can rent all the Airbnbs because that's how awesome our website is. Check it out. Your upcoming bookings. Check out on 15th. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. We handled validations. We handle, yeah, mostly just handling validations. Uh, oh, and then also secure, uh, doing like a status on the booking so that uh, we make sure that the customer has paid for the booking before they can view it and they see that they can check in and everything. And we're doing using webhooks, which makes it secure rather than just doing it based off the return URL. This is pretty exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You found it useful. Thanks for the commenter who suggested these changes. I really appreciate that. Appreciate that. And if anybody else has any ideas that would make this app better, please leave it down below in the comment section and I would love to handle that in a future video.